Coming up on the Keto Camp Podcast, we bring on Dr. Michael Rice and Dr. John Laurence. Six people go into a courtroom and testify about an accident, and you're sitting there and you wonder if any two of them were at the same accident because their descriptors are so different. Why? Because no two of them were at the same accident. Oh yes, externally, they each experienced the same actuality, but each one saw in their nine-bit mind, if they had a mind that could hold nine bits, the actual laboratory stats on that one were five, or pardon me, seven plus or minus two, but each person, all they have to do is be looking at a different nine bits of information in their minds and they have a different reality about what happened. When we start making room for people to have different realities and having to insist their reality has got to be the same as ours, because the truth is we're all sitting around looking through these nine bit minds at something that is so huge and so magnificent that everything that's of value in that nine bit mind, we would gladly throw away for a taste of that actuality. I'm a certified functional health practitioner who's on a mission to educate 1 billion people. I've been obese for most of my life. From rock bottom to the top of the mountain, I am passionate about studying ancient healing strategies like fasting and the ketogenic diet and curating this information on the Keto Camp podcast. My goal is to bring you the thought leaders in this space. My name is Ben Azadi, and I want to thank you for spending part of your day with me. Hey, Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, host of the Keto Camp podcast, best selling author of Keto Flex. Today's episode is super impactful, and it's, you know what, a perfect timing right off the episode we just did with Dr. Bruce Lipton. Dr. Bruce Lipton on the previous episode really outlined how your thoughts could destroy your health destroy your immune system or build it back up. Well, Dr. Michael Rice, his work is very much aligned with Dr. Bruce Lipton's work. This is the first time Dr. Michael Rice has been on the show. Well, actually, that's not necessarily true. He was actually, as a bonus part of a previous episode with Dr. John Laurence, we brought on Dr. Michael Rice, who happened to be in that room. The man is super smart. He really understands breath work, how the mind works, how to change your thoughts, how to go from being a victim to a victor. And we get into some great things here. And Dr. John Laurence joins us as well. This is the first time somebody has been on the show for the fourth time, and that is Dr. John Laurence. He's been on several times talking about melatonin, speaking about PRP injections, speaking about biohacks, and much more. We'll drop links for previous episodes with Dr. John Laurence down below. But we get into the conversation of the way you are viewing the world through perspective and energy. What perspective, what energy are you using to view that world? We get into the definition of love and how love is flowing through your cells. Dr. Rice explains this process of still point breathing and how that could relieve mental and emotional stress. We get into the importance of forgiveness on your journey and what exactly forgiveness means. A lot of people think forgiveness is it letting somebody off the hook, but that's not what forgiveness means and you'll understand on today's episode we get into one basic principle around fasting and spiritual practices how to get the love to flow with every single one of your breaths why hate is a disease and it halts the healing process how you can live by dying and much more we go deep so sit back enjoy this one you're going to really get a lot of value from this conversation I want to encourage you to leave the Keto Camp podcast a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts if you haven't done so already. Please do so. It really helps the show grow and expand and reach more people. Also, if you haven't gotten my book, Keto Flex, it is a bestseller on Amazon. It's available right now. Kindle and paperback, 311 pages of Keto Gold. If you want to really understand how to do keto and fasting the right way, get the book. Head to ketoflexbook.com. Purchase it today and change your health for the better. Did you know there's actually beverages that can supercharge your fasting results? My favorite, which is a keto powerhouse, is apple cider vinegar. There's a ton of research showing apple cider vinegar has been beneficial 
for boosting your metabolism, suppressing appetite, reducing fat storage. That's because apple cider vinegar contains acetic acid, which is a short chain fatty acid that's been shown to promote weight loss in those ways. Also, apple cider vinegar is one of the best ways to balance your blood sugars. A study showed apple cider vinegar improved insulin sensitivity after high carb meals up to 34%. We also know that apple cider vinegar stimulates digestion, acts as a bile stimulant to help break down the fat you're eating on keto. Another research study showed apple cider vinegar protects against mineral depletion. If you're like me, you probably don't like the taste of apple cider vinegar. I think it tastes disgusting. That's why my go-to is Paleo Valley's Apple Cider Vinegar Complex. This is an organic blend of apple cider vinegar and four more gut and health supportive superfoods. I take this before my meals, I take it before coffee, and this enhances my fast and my blood sugar regulation. You'll find it contains organic apple cider vinegar, organic turmeric, organic ginger, organic Ceylon cinnamon, and organic lemon. Since you are a listener of the Keto Camp podcast, we worked out an exclusive discount code for you to get the apple cider vinegar complex capsules and all of the products over at Paleo Valley. All you need to do, head to paleovalley.com, use the coupon code BEN15, that is BEN15 at checkout, and you'll get 15% off your entire order. By the way, they got delicious beef sticks and an awesome organ meat complex. Go check them out. Paleovalley.com, use Ben15 at checkout. Okay, let's get into this conversation with Dr. Michael Rice and Dr. John Lawrence. Dr. Michael Rice is the founder and director of Heartland, a self-healing center in the Ozark Mountains. He is a world-renowned lecturer and teacher on health and healing with doctorates in naturopathic medicine and in holistic philosophy. The focus of his studies combine body-mind principles, physics, and ancient studies into a unique body of pioneering work in the fields of self-healing, healing through relationships, anger and grief resolution, world peace, and inner process of forgiveness. Dr. John Laurence has a gift for difficult cases where other practitioners have failed. With the successful integration of functional neurology, chiropractic, naturopathy, nutrition, using the Assyria detoxification programs, Lumomed, and other protocols, his musculoskeletal ultrasound training includes over 100 hours through the Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute, 60 hours through AAOM, 90 hours through AOAPRM, and 60 through TOBI. That's a lot of training. Let's bring them both on the show. Dr. Michael Rice, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Delighted. Honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And Dr. John Laurence, welcome back for the fourth time to the Keto Camp Podcast. Yeah, I'm pleasure to be here, Ben. So this is going to be a really deep conversation that I am personally excited about. And I would love for you, John, because you've known Dr. Michael for 30 years, I think you said. I would love for you to share your relationship with him and how you how his work has helped you in your life. Yeah, well, again, thanks for having me on the show for the fourth time. I'm very flattered. We've had some great conversations on uh, Keto Camp and uh it's just a great platform. I've learned so much about ketogenic diet and uh, fasting. You're a wealth of information. So a pleasure to be here and associated with you. Thank you. W- with that said, um, so Michael Rice is a very close friend, very dear friend. And I first met him when he was speaking at Unity Church, like you said, you know, it was like 30 years ago. Yeah. And I was going through a very dark time in my life. I was going, you know, I just gotten divorced and I was having just lots of anxiety. I was depressed and and I I was just struggling trying to find some answers for and some relief for some of the uh, the negative emotions I was having. And so when I showed up at Unity, Michael started talking about having the brain cells to see things and unique perspectives. And I remember he told a story about if it was the first time you were seeing a propeller moving, you might think that that was a, a disc versus actually a propeller moving. So, it, you know, it has to do with the way that you're viewing the world and your perspective. And so I went to an intensive that he had. And at the end of the intensive, he taught us to do something called still point breathing, which I still do today. It's one of the most valuable techniques that I've learned. And this was breath work 
way before Wim Hof, way before everyone else has kind of jumped on the bandwagon of doing breath work. Michael was way ahead of that. You know, I don't know how many, I'll let him describe it, but um, this was such a monumental upgrade for me to regain some health. And there's something called your autonomic nervous system. And when you do breath work, you're supporting this really important important part of your nervous system that regulates your heartbeat and your blood pressure and your digestion and your blood vessels and your circulation. And so this is a really, really important episode. This subject matter is really important, working on mental, emotional, spiritual applications and some of the breathing exercises that Michael teaches are just really monumental. So with that said, I bring you Dr. Michael Rice. <laughs> well, thank you, John. Delight to have worked with you over the years, and uh, I appreciate what you've taught me in the healing realm as well. So it's a powerful gathering that we're here to do. And uh, Ben, what I've been hearing of, of your work and as things have I've been listening sat in that last interview you did with john it was a, a nice space for i've worked with people for with fasting for decades used to guide people through deep detoxes and cleanses and uh, i've i've built some new brain cells gotten some new understanding of that whole process as well so that was a great conversation to uh, to join in thank you yeah and you added to that conversation at the end so if you didn't listen to that episode 240 dr michael rice added about 10 minutes of just brilliance which she's going to dive deep into now so yeah go back to your story how long ago did you get involved with this area and you, with your expertise and why did you get involved with it well you know the starting point for me was the last six days that i was in utero my mother had toxemia on the evening of my birth, they called my father at work and said, if you want to see this kid alive, you better get down here because he's not going to be here in the morning. And they had given her Pitocin for six days to try to force me out of the womb. And the next 25 years, I lived on an inhalator and pills, oxygen tent. And, and I got to the point where I realized that while the drugs they were giving me were keeping me alive, they were killing me that it wasn't health producing though it was life preserving you know you look at quality of life issues and uh, and so that set me on a track set me on a journey i had to find healing and my original work my training before that had been in electronics with a side study in physics and i was in the technical world and when i first came across the uh, the field of naturopathic medicine what became clear to me, I'm, I'm a naturopath, and what became clear to me is that we're dealing here with an energy system. So everything that I learned from Einstein and everything that come, you know, down the pike with all of that physics study and such started to unfold in the realm of health and healing and wholeness. And you know, one of my favorite quotes from Einstein is, on such things as matter, we've been all wrong. What we've heard too before called matter is energy. Energy whose vibrations have been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. Matter doesn't exist. We don't live in a material world. That's a trick. Our eye, perceptual constructs in our mind lie to us. You know, John made reference to one of the examples that I use. We bring a guy from the jungles of South America and we stand in front of an airplane propeller, you know, spinning on the airplane. And, does he see forearms spinning around a pivot point? No. What does he see? He sees literally his perceptual system because it can't keep up with the rate of spin of the propeller, shows him a shiny silver disc, something that isn't there. Well, if you could see what's in front of you, if you could actually adjust the rate of vibration, you know, if we could say to this fellow standing in front of the propeller, okay, we're going to adjust your eye now, and you're going to see that this is actually forearms spinning around a perfect point, his whole world would change. And he'd realize that every word that he developed based on this being a shiny silver disc was false. It just wasn't accurate. It just wasn't true. And when we start to realize if you could adjust the rate of vibration in which your eye perceives me or yourself in the mirror, you'd see this whirring mass of electrons, protons, neutrons, and light, you wouldn't see a body. And everything based in a conversation about bodies is a lie. This is not true. Now, we've got a whole perceptual construct made up where we, we make sense of it, and it sort of works. But how often do people end up saying, you know, it doesn't matter how hard I try, it doesn't matter what happens. Why is this happening to me again? Or sometimes people say, why are they doing this to me again? 
that, by the way, is the title of my book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? I feel blessed the universe reserved that for me. And it's happening to me again, and I don't care whether it's health or relationships or finances or just my, you know, when I look at this person in the mirror, it happens because there are energetic dynamics in me out of which I'm creating my life, and I am unconscious of those dynamics. One of the workshops I do is called On Creating Consciously. We you know, probably one of the greatest atrocities done to us as human beings down through the ages and that we bought into is that we've hidden, been hidden, had hidden from ourselves the fact that we are by nature creators. You and I are creative beings, which, of course, is an idea that everybody loves when the creation's going well. <laughs> but when the creation's not going so well, don't we know who the name of the perpetrator is? And isn't their name always them? If only they'd be different, my life would change and the outcome would be different. One of my favorite tongue-in-cheek lines to deliver in my workshops is, you'll notice if you've been through a particular painful reality 87 different times with 42 different people, you're the only one that was there every time. It's about you. And when you realize this is an energy system through which you create, then you start to realize that you create according to the content of this energy system. And this energy system that we call, or at least one aspect of it that we call a body-mind unit, is literally a multi-generational database that holds everything that's gone on in our whole bloodline. And there are energies that support our life force, and there are energies that will destroy us. And if you go back and, and you know, the, the next piece in my personal journey was to encounter the first century Aramaic teachings of the New Testament. And I want to be clear that we're not going to go in the direction of a religious conversation because in the New Testament, in Aramaic, the original language, it's not about a religious conversation. It's about physics. It's about physiology. It's about psychology. It's about genetics. Hmm. When they said the sins of the fathers will be passed yeah, into three and four generations, they weren't talking about how you're going to get punished for what has happened. They're telling you how your physiology works. And then if you look at that word sin, sin in Aramaic is not what the Greeks have taught us. It's some terrible, awful thing that you've done and you're going to be punished for it. The word sin is an archery term. If you went out on the, on the archery range and you fired at the bullseye and you missed the bullseye, the scorekeeper will, would yell sin. It just means off the mark. And when I engage in energy that's off the mark, then I start the deterioration of this energy system. Wherever the deteriorating, wherever the off the mark energy is, the disintegrative energy is, I start to create disintegration in tissue. Now, there are lots of things I can do on a symptomatic level to try to fix that. Mm -hmm. And I can manipulate it, and I can move it forward, but in the last analysis, you notice pretty much everybody ends up, the bottom line is, why is this happening to me again? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? And it's not until I recognize the energetic patterns out of which I'm creating my life, and that if they are patterns that are not based in human life, then I'm in trouble. My health is in trouble, my relationships are in trouble, my finances are in trouble, it, it, it hits every area of our lives. And so, of course, then it comes to the question of, well, then, Michael, if, if that's true, what's the energy that this system's designed for? Mm -hmm. And my offering is that there aren't enough words in any language on the planet to describe that. But there is a way to have a direct experience of that. And that is, hold a newborn baby. Have you ever held a newborn, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. If you went back to the moment where you held that newborn and you tapped into the essence of that newborn, what word would you use to describe that newborn? Single word, the essence of the newborn, not what was going on for you. Love. Yeah. So that's a question that my wife and I, Jeannie, have asked of tens of tens of thousands of people all over the globe. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is because that's the stuff we're made of. Now, the next question I usually ask people when I ask that newborn experience is, tap in once again to the essence of the newborn and ask yourself the question, is the newborn loving you or is the newborn love? Hmm. 
it's pretty clear. <laughs> so right. my offering is that that's, that's the best way I've found to establish what we are designed for and the fuel that's designed to motivate to move through the human cell. In fact, I was doing a, a still point session. John was talking about still point earlier. I was doing a, a still point session just a, a few weeks ago and was given a whole new insight and for me a whole new definition a definition of love. And that is that love, or pardon me, of life, that life is love flowing through a cell. Mm, and beautiful. anything we do to restrict that physically, mentally, emotionally, is going to create disease processes. Mm. In the ancient Aramaic, where there was a disease process going on, there was a solution to that disease process. And the solution, and, and again, you can't bring Greek brain cells into this, because if you bring the Greek into it, everything gets flipped exactly backward. In the Aramaic, the solution was forgiveness. Now, you'll notice the Greeks have taught us that forgiveness is this thing that is really nice for me to do because, of course, it's all your fault. You're the reason I'm in pain and trauma, again. But I'll let you off the hook for my pain and trauma. Then everything's going to get better in my life. And that's just a total fraud. I mean, when you really think about it, so I've got an energy moving through me that's painful, I've been through this energy 87 different times with 42 different people. I've had this pain. But today, while it's moving through me, I'm going to blame you, the new person that I just met last week. Hmm. And it's... then I'm going to accept the resolution of I'm going to let you off the hook for that pain that's moving in me again. And I'm so, going to expect things to get better. Go ahead, John. So, Michael, if I could, if I could kind of like bring this back a little bit. So there's, there's all this language going on in the subconscious or the emotions that are coming up so there we think thoughts and then there's an emotional reaction to those thoughts right i think there's a shakespeare um quote emotional result. About, our words fly out our thoughts um, uh, being below yeah unconscious so you know what i think is really just it blows my mind to think about it. so i know that you started out as a deacon in the catholic church right is that right mm-hmm Michael, yep. and then you had an assignment where you were working on the original Aramaic Bible. So literally wow. the original scripture that Yeshua was Jesus's original name, that it was the original Bible. And I think they, didn't they try to like eradicate all of them or destroy them at one point? There was one left or something? Yeah, well, there was actually a, um, a man named Rabbala. His name is the root of the word rabble rouser today. <laughs> and he was a bishop in the church, and it wasn't actually the Roman church. The, the, my work there was in the Eastern Orthodox Church, but where they're working with the original Aramaic language as the language of their scriptures. But uh, Rabbala was a bishop who attempted to eradicate. He literally tried to track down all of the Aramaic writings and destroy them and mm -hmm. replace them with his interpretation. Yeah, it's crazy. It's you know, I mean, we can only postulate why they wanted to do that, because when you start looking at the, the, the original writings of Jesus compared to what's in the Bible now, there's a lot of languaging that almost sounds like they're trying to put a lot of fear and almost there's some controlling aspects and some political aspects of it. Whereas the original, like just even that example that you used about sin, I mean, for those watching this, just think about that. Like we're talking about an archery term, you missed, try another shot. I mean, it's like inviting people like, hey, you're, it's all good. You know, you're good, you, you're, you're trying, but just a little bit to the left, right? Versus no. you're going to go to hell and burn for the rest of existence, <laughs> right? I mean, there's a huge difference between those two. And uh, there, there's so many different examples of some of the um, original context that, that Yeshua brought. I'd love to hear some more of that from you. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I think is really important here to, to recognize is that another lie that we've been taught is that we have a pair of windows called eyes, and we look out through our eyes and we see what's out there. Now, from a physiological point of view, from a physicist point of view, that's ridiculous. The eye is a one-way valve. Yes, it receives information. 
in the form of light. That light entering into the eye causes brain cells to fire, causes energy to move through resonance, and whatever is stored in the mind will show up as the picture that we think we see out there, but the picture we think we see out there is nothing but a construct in our own minds. Mm -hmm. And there's some interesting uh, research that comes out of Harvard. Actually, it's, it's the most quoted research in psychology f for decades. And it's work that was done where they showed that in a time frame where 10,000 brain cells were fine. I mean, they got people hooked up to electrodes. They can measure 10,000 bits of electrical activity going on. And the max amount of information that goes into conscious awareness is nine bits of data. We can see this little tiny piece of this mass of information moving. And in that same time frame, it's been estimated that there are approximately 20 trillion bits of data going on in the actuality. Oh. So when you realize that everything you see and you have ever seen is a construct of your mind, whoever is in charge of what structures your mind, which is for humans, primarily language, constructs the world you see and the world you live in the world you inhabit. Hey, I wanna let you know about an amazing company who offers really impressive foods from nature. I'm referring to wildfoods.co. If you're looking for a one-stop shop for your keto supplements, keto coffee, keto nuts and seeds, and amazing collagen protein powders, you're gonna to wanna to check out wildfoods.co. Wild Foods specializes in real foods from small producers around the world. They're passionate about their ingredients and they have a powerful story. All of their products do not contain artificial sweeteners, no gluten, no soy, no refined sugars, no preservatives, and no fillers. They adhere to ridiculously high standards like myself, which is why I endorsed them. So if you're looking for some keto protein powders, golden milk lattes for some restful nights of sleep, multivitamins for men and women, cacao powders, elderberry capsules for the immune system, wild Himalayan pink salt for your electrolyte balance, and much more, I want you to check out my friends over at wildfoods.co. As a listener of the Keto Camp Podcast, you will receive 20% off your order by using the coupon code KETOCAMP at checkout. No space in between. Keto Camp, camp with a K at checkout. Get 20% off your order. Head to wildfoods.co. Use Keto Camp at checkout and enjoy their awesome products. Until you bring back into alignment the language, everything's crazy. Mm -hmm. you know, Vladimir Lenin is probably responsible for more deaths on planet Earth than any human being that's ever existed. Guess what he said in his writings? If you can change the meaning of a culture's words, you can destroy the culture. Mm. We see that happen in this day. Culture is transferred from human to human by words. And when you change the meaning of the words, all of a sudden, person A has a certain set of words for something. Person B has the same words, but different brain cells, and their mind generates a whole different picture. Well, Neither one like of them the reflecting sin. the actual world. It's just like the it's word sin. We just talked reality. about it's such right. a different perspective just on that one word alone, you know, and, and, and it's a cultural thing, right? So all these different words have different meanings, and then we filter these, these words and these meanings and collections of meanings and we construct our reality. I mean, I had this conversation with a patient that came in just yesterday and she was depressed and had anxiety. And so I was just talking to her about there's different ways that you can look. And it was COVID that was primarily just causing so much stress for her. And right. I was telling her my experience of COVID has been much different. And it's just because I'm looking at life differently. And you know, what? one question I wanted to ask you, and of course I've got my own idea of what you, how you would answer this, but when I was suffering so much, when I came to you, you know, 25, 30 years ago, and you had me do that still point, I felt better for a long time after, yeah. after doing that session. Obviously I, I continued to do some work, but what was really happening there that gave me so much relief of my mental, emotional stress? Well, my offering would be that well, there are many levels I can answer that question on, but let's take it on the primary. You'll notice when people are in disturbance or upset, the first thing they do is shut down their breath. When you shut down your breath, you literally 
lock down the mind energy that's trying to surface that you don't want to look at and you don't want to deal with. And so you watch people when they're in emotional trauma and emotional upset and they subventilate. And what happens is they create an artificial barrier. You know, if you talk to psychologists today, they'll tell you that 90 to 95% of your mental processes are unconscious. My offering is that the unconscious is a totally and completely unnatural condition for a human being. We're not designed to have an unconscious. Mm -hmm. We're designed to have a conscious awareness and then subconscious, which is all the data that's in us that we can access anytime we want. But when we create this artificial barrier, and, and if you go back into the ancient teachings, they talked about it as a veil. They said the veil of the temple must be rent in twain. And then they were often told us it was about a purple curtain in the church. No, this is the temple. The veil is the barrier between the subconscious and the unconscious. And when there's something we don't want to deal with, we lock the breath down and we lock those untoward energies into our unconscious, someplace we don't have access to. But they're still there and life is going to come along and resonate those things and move them and create the drama and the trauma and the pain that we experience. And if we keep holding our breath, we keep those energies locked in and we keep functioning out of that drama and trauma. Again, what do they say? The veil has to be open. The barrier between the subconscious and the unconscious has to be open. How do you open it? You open it with the breath. Hmm. The proper operation of the breath opens the unconscious and puts you into process. And process, in my work, I define as the ability to hold love, your essential nature, conscious, active, and present, when something less than love comes up. Hmm. And so... You'll remember in that still point process, we opened, we moved into, we did exercises that moved into a space of bringing love into an active present state. And then when people breathed, started to open that veil, whatever starts to surface, you go into high speed, fast forward process, especially when you hit the still point. And the still point is a place where the breath, as opposed to being held, spontaneously stops. That's when the veil is wide open. Mm -hmm. And you can process, you know, whatever your vitality has the strength to process, you can move out of your structure and be done with it. It doesn't mean you're finished with that issue because there's a, an automatic shutdown mechanism in the structure that you can only open what you've got the vitality to handle. I use the example of, you know, let's imagine we create a vitality meter. It goes from 1 to 10. And this has to do with a lot of different health tools. What they do is they don't heal anybody, but they create extra vitality. And when one gets to a new level of vitality, they can process the dis-ease energies they've been holding on to. So let's imagine we've got a vitality meter. It goes from 1 to 10. And here I am at a level 5 vitality. And I have a level seven toxin. Let me get my hands in. So I have a level five vitality. And I have a level seven toxin. Now, I can want to process that level seven, level six stuff until the cows come home. But there's a built in suppress mechanism that if my vitality is only out of five, this isn't going to open. Mm -hmm. It's going to remain shut down. Because if it did, it could literally physiologically kill me. As I do my work, and, and what happens with a still point is you connect to new levels of vitality. I can build that five, that six, that seven, and I get up to a level 7.5. And this is something that creates a lot of confusion for people who engage in different tools without really understanding the healing process. If I've got this level seven toxin and I all of a sudden I'm at a level 7.5 vitality, all hell breaks loose in me. Mm -hmm. All that I've been trying to hide for myself, maybe my whole life, maybe for generations, starts to move and up comes confusion and fear and rage and guilt and all that stuff. And people, well, I'm going to quit. And, you know, well, let me go just get something to shut me back down again. But when I hit those new levels of vitality, it's the opportunity to move to the next level of accessing those disintegrative energies, literally in Aramaic, my sin processing through them and removing them so there's no longer a load on the cell then i need to do all these machinations to take care of it the cells restored to its connectedness to love and it functions as it's designed to with a proper power supply it organizes its own chemistry to be perfectly balanced and functional as it was designed to be but when we disconnect from that when love is not present and i mean just take a look at the political situation today 
how many people in our world even can fathom what love is or have the direct experience of its presence. And if I'm connected to a power supply that is off the mark, then my energy system is in a state of winding down. We call that diseases and there'll be degenerative, 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 degenerative until death occurs. If we start to, and one of the key tools is breathe, do what it takes like fasting, like nutritional support, you know, all the medical procedures that you do in, in your office, you know, watching you do that uh, stem cell process was really powerful to just sit there and watch the skill and the ability with which you did that, John, was really pretty awesome for me. Yeah. But when we, when we then have those things and we're doing the work of unloading the cell from what didn't belong, reconnecting to a proper power supply. And if you remember in that still point process, there were moments where you were just totally and completely connected to the active presence of love. Mm -hmm. When that happens, healing occurs. Yeah. It, 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 filter. Go ahead. Well, I, I was going to kind of chime in because I know what probably a lot of people listening to this, because it, it's such deep information that it's, it's hard to really wrap your head around the totality behind it. And your body of is, is going to, yeah, it's, it, it would take us a long time to really give people the, the full experience. Certainly we're going to give people an opportunity to be able to find out where to find you and more about you. But I think one of the things that I, I really want the, the, the listeners to understand is that there's, there's a, an aspect of forgiveness that you figured out and it's completely different than, Basically, this is another, you know, message that Yeshua, Jesus brought to us was that there's a forgiveness process, which it's not letting someone else off the hook, but it's more of like, for instance, I have my sister yells at me and I get angry. And one of the things that's really helped me out a lot is to know that anger is not a true emotion and that it's a drug. And so I use that drug so I don't actually have to feel what's really underneath, which is something in my subconscious that's usually either fear or it's sadness. And so with regards to the work that you teach, what I think is so amazing about your work is you actually have a process of basically uncovering that and then placing that in the context of pure love and it dissolves. And so this is a way that people can literally go through and address these subconscious emotions that are basically causing all of these negative emotions, really. Yeah. Yeah. And the process, you know, again, one of the things we work to do, I have a video called Aramaicisms. It's a four hour video where an Aramaic scholar and myself discuss and, and Aramaicisms is a, a term I coined to represent our effort to restore the original meaning of the first century Aramaic words. Mm -hmm. And so we go through that. And so one of them we just covered was love. You know, we've been taught love is sexual athletics or, you know, sacrifice yourself, lay, you know, lay down your life for yourself. No, it's the essence of who we are. Then probably the next most important word that's been degraded is the word forgiveness. It's got nothing to do with me letting you off the hook because there's disintegrative energy because in the arm makes sense there's sin in me. There's something that doesn't belong that's loading myself up and creating all kinds of disease processes, which I can go and do all kinds of medical things about it which can help and support and prolong the life of the cell. But if I don't deal with the original offending energy that's in the cell, real health is not going to be available to me. And it just takes time to build the brain cells for that. In fact, go back 2000 years ago and the Greeks kind of translated this one fairly well. You hear Yeshua saying, you've got to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Those who seeing do not see, those who hearing do not hear. What is he saying? He's saying there, if you don't have the brain cells for the truth of what's happening in your life, you're going to create a perceptual structure and you think you see what's going on. But the truth is, you're not seeing anything at all except a projection from the disintegrative content of your own mind. 
And so you've got to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. You've got to build the brain cells for the truth of what's going on. And, you know, that's been the thrust of the last 50 years of my work. And, you know, five days a week, I do a radio show from one till two o'clock Eastern time, where we're there to help people to build the brain cells. We've actually got 10 years of archives. I don't know how many thousands of hours are in archives. People can go back and access and build the brain cells. We've got an app for doing first century Aramaic forgiveness on your phone. You know, we've we've spent the last half century developing tools to support people in developing the brain cells to really comprehend what's going on. And then the how to, you know, my original work was in electronics and you know in that field if you were designing a piece of electronic equipment or repairing a piece of electronic equipment didn't matter what your philosophy was when it came off the other end of the bench it had to work <laughs> and so that's sort of been my thing is each time i've touched into something that can support people in their healing process, we get it down to, here's the tool, here's how you can use it. So we have a what we call reality, man, reality management or forgiveness uh, worksheet. We have codependence, we have relationship materials. We've got a whole cadre of materials for supporting people, building the brain cells for acquiring a set of tools and using them to literally change the constructs of their minds. I wanna take a quick break here to share with you about the dangers of taking fish oil. I know, shocking. I was somebody who took fish oil every single day for years. And then I came across a ton of research showing the dangers of consuming fish oil. I immediately found an amazing product called Pureform. Pureform is a plant-based omega. And the cool thing about Pureform is that it is uniquely processed with nitrogen to preserve it and make sure it does not oxidized. These essential fatty acids are cold pressed and you get the proper balance of omega-6 and omega-3 to feed your cells what it desires. We know that life begins and ends at the cell membrane and when you have the proper fats, the building blocks for those cell membranes, all of a sudden your fat burning hormones can do its job. So you lose weight. All of a sudden your cells produce energy so you feel good. So we know that cellular health is key for performance and longevity. So I've been taking Pureform every single day. My dog takes it every single day. So does my girlfriend and my mom. This is how much I love the product. If you wanna get your bottle delivered to your door, head over to purelifescience.com. Check them out, order a bottle or two, and you'll be amazed by how you feel after taking this just after a few days. That is Pure lifescience.com. Use the coupon code BEN4 to apply a $4 off coupon. That is BEN, B-E-N, and the number four. International shipping is available. Okay, let's go back into this episode of the Keto Camp Podcast. You know, you think about six people go into a courtroom and testify about an accident, and you're sitting there and you wonder if any two of them were at the same accident because their descriptors are so different. Why? Because no two of them were at the same accident. Oh yes, externally, they each experienced the same actuality, but each one saw in their nine bit mind, if they had a mind that could hold nine bits, the actual laboratory stats on that one were five, or pardon me, seven plus or minus two, but each person, all they have to do is be looking at a different nine bits of information in their minds, and they have a different reality about what happened. When we start making room for people to have different realities and having to insist their reality has got to be the same as ours, because the truth is we're all sitting around looking through these nine bit minds at something that is so huge and so magnificent that everything that's of value in that nine bit mind, we would gladly throw away for a taste of that actuality. And then what the tools this man Yeshua developed, and that's where the core of my work comes from, the first century Aramaic teachings of the man, the tools were designed to take people to that experience so they live there 24-7, 365, literally back to our original nature as love, functioning out of love, and whenever something less than that comes up, move it out. One of the first indicators that something less than love is moving is people will hold the breath. Now let's take another layer of looking at the breath and why that's so powerful. If you go back into the Aramaic language in the creation story, they tell us God sent out this breath. 
not what it says in Aramaic. Or pardon me, the Greeks tell us God sent out his spirit. In Aramaic, what it is, it says God sent out his breath. It's our direct connection to the creation. And when we cut ourselves off from it, it's like we're out here on our own suffering. Michael, do you think? Yeah, we open a whole different energy flow through the structure and through the system. And then that opens a space where I realize now I've got work to do because I'm designed to be this device that this active presence of love flows through and expresses his life. And I've shut it down to a dripping tap filled with hostility or fear, wishing I could have life and health and abundance. There's a couple questions that I've got. One is, um, do you think that there's something related to the release of DMT with the still point breathing? And the second question, this is the million dollar question is, was Jesus keto? Um, <laughs> he fasted. So now, I know he broke bread. He but, fasting, um, yeah. I, I know that ketosis is such a valuable and fasting is such a valuable asset to a lot of spiritual practices and a lot of meditation practices and actually getting that feeling of love. So I'd love to hear your take on that, too. Well, John, I don't know if you've ever touched into it as a nature path, but one of the basic principles I was taught in naturopathy around fasting was that the part of the mind where the ego is seated, where the false self, the self that's based in errant power person, what I call power person messages, the place where that's seated in the brain is fed directly from the stomach. And when you fast, it gets no nutrition, no nutrition, it starts to collapse. And that's where that wider state of being can open and come into expression. Hmm. And, and by the way, you know, as far as building the brain cells, we started on that topic and, and support, you know, five days a week, people are welcome to call into my radio show one till two o'clock Eastern time. And it's a, it's an internet show. Most people, of course, because we've got, you know, unlimited long distance these days on our phone, just call in and the calling number is 563-999-3581. And we're there an hour a day, five days a week to answer questions. It's awesome. We'll put that in the notes. We'll have Rachel put that in the notes down below. Uh, you know, I, I would like to dive into real quick uh, some practical things that the audience can do because I love how you shared that life is love going through your cells and anything less than that is going to end up in dis-ease, right? And what I'm hearing is that it really starts with noticing and being aware of your breathing and the minute or the second that you notice you're holding your breath or you're breathing through your mouth or you're just not letting it flow – that's something we want to correct. So what are some ways to have awareness that's a quick awareness to that? And what can we do to get the love back to flowing with our breath? Well, all you have to do is breathe fully in order to, to start to open the gateway for that flood of love to come back into literally be incarnated. And for, I mean, every tool that I teach, I mean, if, if I were an intensive right now, I've actually got a board behind me that's one of my intensive boards. And if I were an intensive, I'd turn around with a marker now and I'd write on the board and everybody in the class would be laughing because I do this over and over and over again. When somebody says, well, how do we do this? It's all of the above. It Literally, if you went back to my first radio show 10 years ago and you listen to every minute, five days a week for 10 years, I wouldn't talk about anything else except that question here's the how-to and it's it comes in every arena every perspective from you know like when we do an intensive we do total fresh and raw dietary regimen we serve nothing cooked everything's fresh and raw and that vitalizes that strengthens that builds vitality and then you know i mean there's just 50 years of research and development on here are the tools here's the how-to so you say breathe fully, you just got to breathe fully, but some people don't even know what that means. Could you just explain a little bit more? What does that mean to breathe fully? You know, the, the still point process itself is one that when you engage in it, you maybe confirm this, John, when you open up and you start moving things, it can be pretty intense, deeply profound. And so it's something that I only ever teach in person. I don't write about it. I don't give instructions here, go home and do this because here's what, not that you can do any damage with your breath. I mean, you're meant to breathe fully, but if you've lived a life of 
dissociation, you know, of shutting the breath down to dissociate from content in your own mind, and then you open the floodgates, everything that's in there can start to move. You go into what in naturopathic medicine is called a healing crisis. And the healing crisis is the state where when we hit a new level of vitality, you get to start to process what needs to be processed. And so symptomatically, when you start thinking of this body mind, this whole device as an energy system, then if there are things that are of a disintegrative nature that have been locked into and hidden in the system, and you start opening them back up to move, their release looks exactly like the disease process looked. Can you give an example, uh, an example of that, maybe with like a, a former client or somebody who's been through the process? Yeah, I can. If you look at this energy system as reflecting whatever energies are present in it, and you engage in a disease energy, let's say the disease energy is hatred. When hatred comes into the field, our cellular structure, literally mind energy, we go back to the Aramaic here. The opening words in the book of John were told, say, in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. Not what it says at all. What it says is in the beginning was the mind energy and the mind energy became flesh. When I think a thought, now, what are they proving in the cell biologist laboratory today? When I think a thought, that thought becomes a neuropeptide. That neuropeptide shows up in my structure, circulates around in my structure until it finds a cell with a receptor site that matches. It lands on the cell. Now, what the biologists are telling us is that the cell then replicates the neuropeptide. I don't think that's what happens at all. What actually happens if we were looking, you know, this is the outside of the cell, the neuropeptide lands on this, the receptor site. If we were looking inside, we'd see that, I'll get my hands in, in, in line here, as it comes in, what happens is that neuropeptide's inserting itself in the cell. And when we look at it, we call what we see in the cell chemistry. And so when you realize that this is a process, if, if this is hatred, the disease process of that neuropeptide hitting the cell, the cell screams, ouch, hurt, pain, trauma, stop this. But of course, a fifth of scotch and we can keep doing all the hatred we want and we won't feel a thing. Mm -hmm. When I decide that I want to heal, if I've done a lifetime of hatred, if I have a dad, a mother that was hateful, if I have grandparents, if I have generations of hate going on, then my healing process is going to look like having to feel, experience, and deal with a lot of hate. It's going to be a reversal of the energy flow. So an energy going into the structure creates a certain state, and as it starts to come back out, the state is exactly the same. You can't tell the difference between a disease process and a healing process by the symptoms because they're identical. So on a physical level, healing looks like any kind of physical symptom you've ever had and low energy. On a mental level, healing looks like any kind of negative thought and confusion. On an emotional level, healing looks like any kind of negative feeling and depression. If I'm ready and I start breathing and I'm ready to go into a healing process, I might touch into this old depression, this old pain and trauma, hatred, vengeance, as it starts to move out. And if I don't have a support person there and I don't have the brain cells for dealing with it, I'm probably going to get myself into more difficulty. That's why I don't teach it other than in person. But the symptoms are identical. All the symptoms say is there's energy in the field. Is the energy going in? It's a disease process. Is the energy coming out? Am I breathing fully? Am I letting this life flow through me? Then it's going to throw off everything that doesn't belong. So mm -hmm. when I become symptomatic, there are four things that will tell me that I'm in a healing process rather than a disease process. Four questions that I ask myself. The first one is, have I been doing more and more of the right things? i.e., have I been fasting to build vitality? Have I been doing my work? Have I been eating nutrition that is really, truly nutrition? Or am I eating bankrupt, nutritionally bankrupt food? If the energy components aren't there, then the structure can't process out what it needs to process out. So the first thing is, am I doing more and more of the right things, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally? Am I spending time cultivating the presence of active love in me? If I'm doing that, it's highly vitalizing. So that's the first question I ask myself. If my answer is yes, then the second question I go to is, 
just before I hit these horrible symptoms that I don't want to feel and deal with, had I hit a new level of vitality? Did I go to bed at night so excited about, oh man, I got that breakthrough life is, I got it by the tail, man, I'm on top of the world. And then I get up in the morning and I wonder if anybody got the number of the Mack truck to through my room during the night because I'm lower than a snake's belly. What happened? I thought I was on top of the world last night. Yeah, you were. And now you've hit that new level of vitality. Guess what? All that old crap you've been dissociating from is going to st start to move through and you're going to have to process through the symptoms of healing. So that's the second question I ask myself. Had I been doing the right thing? Third question is, what's happening with my elimination? In a disease process, there's a tendency for there to be a restriction of elimination. In a healing process, there's a tendency for there to be an increase in elimination. And we're talking about the skin, the urinary tract, the bowel, the mucus, mucus membra membranes, the lungs. We're going to start to process that energy out and through all of those systems. And then the fourth thing, and this is especially important for people who've ever done any kind of addictive substances, and that is that literally when we're in the dissociated state and we've got our favorite drug and it doesn't matter whether drug is junk food or alcohol or whatever the at least the energetic signature if not the actual molecules of the substance i used to shut my vitality out so i didn't have to deal with this are still present in physiology when i become vital enough to throw that off those molecules or those energetic signatures are going to start to move and the tendency can be if i don't know that that's what's happening that that drug grabs me by the face and i get sucked right back into the addiction mm -hmm. so if the alcoholic you know we've all heard about the alcoholic that you know got his 30-year chip he's been sober and the next day he fell off the wagon what happened hey a whole lot of people were there for him he had a whole new level of excitement alive this 30 years sober man and his vitality became so high and up came his old addiction the energetic patterns of it that needed to be released and he fell right back into the addiction so so they're the four things that tell you that your symptoms are healing in process that's fascinating that's what it would look like if you're anything like me you probably spend some money each month on your supplements but what if you're still tired and you just don't feel 100 percent well well, there could be a deficiency. What if there was a way to know if you were actually absorbing your supplementation or not absorbing and maybe you're taking too much of something? Well, what I'm bringing you today is a chance to accurately test all of that. In this case, I'm talking about upgraded formulas, upgraded hair test kit and consultation. And once you uncover these hidden deficiencies, you could get rid of these symptoms you might be experiencing that might be affecting your thyroid, adrenals, or much more. Upgraded Formulas is a very cool company. I interviewed Barton Scott, who is the founder and chemical engineer who helps craft all their supplements, and they have this really cool upgraded mineral deficiency analysis. So say goodbye to blood and urine tests, which typically indicate short-term results. Hair is the best identifier, and you could get that hair from your head, armpit area or even pubic area and you'll receive a consultation with a member of upgraded formulas to help discuss your results and it's very simple collect your hair sample send it in and get your results fast we've worked out an exclusive deal keto camp podcast listeners to receive 10 percent off your order head to upgradedformulas.com use the coupon code ben10 at checkout to get your hair mineral kit and any other supplements that you could find on their website. That is upgradedformulas.com. Use the coupon code BEN10. The audience right now, I'm sure they're just, I'm, I'm really absorbing this information and it's a lot, it's really deep. So it's probably gonna be an episode that you wanna listen to a couple times and then go to your radio show, which you gave the phone number. Besides the, the radio show, where else can they go to learn more about your work? Because you, you had mentioned offline, you had, you're doing online intensive. So share a little bit more about that. Do you have a website they could go check out as well? Yeah, and I'll, I'll send you a link when we finish the show. I'll send you a link. There was a woman who recently in our codependence, interdependence intensive, did a piece of work that was generational. She was dealing actually with some heart issues. She'd just been in the hospital. You know, she's in her late 60s, had been in the hospital, heart issues. And so in the intensive, she was given the assignment to deal with and to 
invite her ancestors to give her information about what was going on with her heart. And she went back to a conversation with a long dead, it was either grandfather or great grandfather, who shared when they came from, I forget whether it was Lithuania, but somewhere in, in Europe where they were basically starving. And they thought they were coming to the streets paved with gold. And that he explained that they actually dug a, a hole in the ground, a cave in the ground to live in. And the survival and his rage, his abuse of his children and his spouse, because he was so threatened that, you know, how are we going to eat? Will there be food tomorrow? And, and her process with that. And just, I mean, it's a, just a sweet, powerful conversation that she recounts that she actually had with her dead grandfather or great grandfather whichever it was so i'll send you a link to that if you want to put yeah, it in the notes and absolutely people can get a taste of the end result and you know when you realize you know they talk about the ego ego edging if if, if the scriptures are correct in their de definition of god we've got love it's not some dude but love edging love out ego edging god out mm -hmm. and this this non-being self literally you know we come in the child hold the newborn now i mean that child's enthusiastic about everything it touches and will come back to its abuser over and over and over again until what happens the messages the mind energy that comes from that power person of thought disorders they coagulate into a self, literally an image of a body that we as created love fall into identification with and think we are. You know, go back to Yeshua again. He says, in order for you to live, you've got to die. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How do you live by dying? But when you realize there's you, the true being, the love, the being that you are, that's designed to incarnate and live in this body, and then there's this false image of self that we fall into identification with, that's the self that has to die. It has to be taken apart. But like I made the reference to of the, the guy standing on the tarmac looking at the airplane propeller and seeing a shiny silver disc, you know, he's got generations and generations and generations of conversations and interaction with all of his friends around shiny silver disc. And not a word's true because it's a propeller. Mm -hmm. We've got generations and generations of conversations about bodies and how hate and fear and you know, rage and all that. And it's all a lie. None of it's true about the truth of who we are. And, and when we wake up to the truth of who we are, then the work of dissolving who we are not begins. And when people have a taste of that pure presence of love, I mean, it is so awesome and they go back to their lives and, you know, maybe as you spoke, John, you know, that stayed with you for quite a while. But mm -hmm. sooner or later, what I call carbon-based memory or the non-being self tries to come back online. And it works to displace our experience of ourselves as the presence of love. And so when carbon-based memory, once you've had that taste so profoundly, so powerfully, and you want it, and carbon-based memory starts to kick back in, you've got to change that thing and bring it, bring it back into harmony with the truth of who you are. And that's the work. Thank you, Dr. Michael Rice. I want John to just share some final words, and then let's wrap up this deep conversation of building new brain cells. So John, just some final words for the audience from this conversation. And, and a thought I had before John starts is, you know, I'm available. I mean, my only purpose in life is bring this to the world. So anytime we want to do, I would love to get to the point where I catch up with the master who's been on the show four times and you know, <laughs> anytime that, that you want, I'm, I'm delighted and honored to be available to, to be part of it. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Excuse me, yeah. John. Th thank you, Michael. It's, it's, it's always such a pleasure and an honor to listen to you talk about this subject because it's such a unique perspective that I don't hear from, you know, there's, there's some commonalities, but there's some differences. And ultimately, I think a lot of people, they just accept emotions as being some knee-jerk reaction, and that's just who they are, right? And this person's that way, and that person's this. And, you know, Michael talked about how we will respond to certain people in a certain way, and it, we make it about them, like they did this to me. 
And what Michael's work is basically allowing you to look inside and see why your unique self is reacting that way because you have that emotion in you. You're reacting with anger because you have anger in you and you're filtering through anger when generally it's usually something more like fear or sadness that you're trying to cover up. So I, I think his work is, is very valuable. Anybody looking to dig deeper into this and that wants to explore that, I, I would highly recommend it. Thank you, John. Yeah, we're going to put all of your, your information down below, Michael. So I highly encourage everybody to go and check out his radio show, uh, his intensive. We'll put the link for the what you're going to send me with the, the share of, of the woman. And then also, I know that your book's out of print. Is, is there anywhere to get your book right now or no? Yeah, actually, it's about a quarter of a century ago that that was published and we spread several tens of thousands, I don't even know how many books around the globe. And so you can pretty much always go on Amazon or onto uh, eBay and, and find a copy of it for a couple of bucks. And you can go to our website and you can download it free. I mean, our website's about almost 20,000 pages right now. And wow. you can download the book in English and German and Russian and Spanish and Swedish and Farsi. You know, there's several different, and it's a free download, including English. So you can, you can grab it there too. What's the website? www.whyagain.org. You can also go to your app store on your phone and just type in the words Heartland, all one word, H-E-A-R-T-L-A-N-D, Aramaic, A-R-A-M-A-I-C, forgiveness, and you'll be looking at the world's only forgiveness app. You can download it. It's a totally private app. The only permission it asks is it has to use the internet, but otherwise there are no permissions involved. And you can actually engage in and do the forgiveness process right there on your phone. Step there you by go. step, there's the worksheet. So everything Very we cool. do, we'll put all make it available, we're there to do it. Very cool. We'll put all that in the notes down below so you could go ahead and do that right now when you finish the episode and then go listen to this episode again and, and continue to build those brain cells. Thank you, Michael, for helping us all build new brain cells and live on purpose with our purpose and uh, I appreciate the work that you've done for so many years and for coming on the show and sharing it with the keto campers and John for you too, man, you're brilliant. And thanks for being on the show for the fourth time now. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Dr. Michael Rice and Dr. John Lawrence. If you want to check out some of the links and resources from this episode, we'll drop that in the notes of this podcast. Please leave the show a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't gotten the KetoFlex book yet, go get it over at KetoFlexBook.com. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see you on the next episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Azadi, disclaim responsibility from any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own. And this podcast does not accept responsibility of statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or non-direct interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.